This is Cheney Crab from Entheos, and you're watching Interview Under Fire. All right, so Cheney, I want to obviously we'll go and get the story. I'm going to welcome you to Interview Under Fire, of course. Welcome back to Texas, and thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me today. A popular topic I always like to touch on with my guests is obviously Texas, right? Because the first thing we talked about right in the pre-interview was how hot it was here. This has obviously become a popular destination stop for everyone over the years. And uh, last time you guys were here, we're with Whitechapel in 2023 at Granada. The crowd has always been so great too, like at least from all the footage I've seen over the years. I've known each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're approaching what, almost 10th year in existence for Entheos, which is crazy to think about when we get to that. Insane. But how are you? I don't think I asked you that yet. And then number two, how has the tour been? So, uh, Well, I was going to include that in the how am I. I'm great. Uh, you know, out here living the dream. This has been like the best tour we've ever done, which it seems like that's how it goes over the years, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, having a blast. It's so fun sharing the stage with these guys. Everyone's very nice on this tour, which is also awesome. And yeah, it's best tour ever. What is it about Texas and about Dallas that maybe like just keeps bringing you guys back? Because you're originally from Iowa, like yes. you mentioned, but you know grew up in California also. But mm -hmm. it's it's da Dallas is always on Andios's list. So That's you tell true. me from your perspective. Well, I, the Texas crowds are insane. Like Texas okay. is there is Texas metal, right? We talk about that everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, so what keeps us coming back is honestly just being booked here they want us to keep coming back so we keep coming but the band for a while was half based out of houston so i feel like there's we have in our hearts we feel like texas is a part of our band in yeah. a way um and yeah everyone every crowd is insane i can't think of a texas show that that wasn't great like none come to mind i was just thinking about this venue right now we're sitting at this probably will be entheos's biggest crowd as far as Dallas is concerned? Yeah. Have you played at the factory before? We have. We actually, okay. I was talking about that earlier today, our maybe third show ever was here. It was a festival with animals as leaders and between the buried and me uh, in 2015, mm. right okay. when the band, maybe like three months after the band started. So I'm glad oh, to be so back. You already know what to expect there. If you're playing <laughs> those bands. Yeah. Because front to back, like it, when you're up on stage, obviously, you know, like the perspective is like it's huge. It's it looks insane. like twice the size as opposed to just we just came in earlier. Absolutely. But, but yeah. um, when you get people in a building like this, it makes the building seem way bigger than it. It's crazy. It's a it's a different thing yeah. than going out and seeing it bare. Before I move on, since we're still on that Texas subject, have, you probably get this a lot. Maybe you have already. Have you been to Bucky's yet? Oh. Well, I also live in Tennessee, so it's okay. like there's a Bucky's between Nashville and Knoxville. So if we ever drive there, I didn't know that. This yeah. is news to me. Yeah. Okay, because yes. I went to Nashville last year, and we went from well, we went from Memphis to Nashville, but okay, I don't but, think there's one on that route. But you know the funny thing about Bucky's <laughs> that we joke about all the time is every time you hear of one being built, it's like oh, they're building the biggest Bucky's ever in this place. So it's like every Bucky's is the biggest Bucky's. They're always ever. trying to like one up one another and yeah. each other and. Uh, Okay, so I've asked all my guests this. At this point, hey, Bucky's, you can sponsor Interview Under Fire. It's not the worst thing ever. I sponsor mean, we, I mean, Interview Under you're Fire. You're hearing Come it from Chain yourself. We did um, go today, actually. We went earlier yeah. today. I was kind of mad about it because we were running late, and everyone was like, we have to go to Bucky's. It's like, you guys, we can't go in there. We're going to spend 30 minutes in there. So I gave everyone a 10-minute time 30 minutes limit. in there is almost like a miracle. It's, yeah. You kind of have to spend like at least a couple hours. It's true. Really we were there for fixed. 10 minutes. I timed it today. Okay, that's pretty impressive. We made it. Um, so now we're talking about like touring and stuff. Last night you were in Houston, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we're closing out this tour pretty soon, which is, uh, that's crazy to think about. Yeah, but um, are you getting to spend time in any of these cities, uh, Cheney? I know you, you know, being on the road so much as you guys are, how much time are you getting to spend for yourself when you just, because it, it's like a part of your life now. You right. have to be on the road at this mm -hmm. point. Well, I'm a vocalist and as people know, vocalists have very little to do and I make sure that I have very little <laughs> to do. I don't have anything to load or anything to set up during yeah. the day. So I sometimes get a leave, like I'll, I'll Uber to the gym. That's kind of okay. like a thing I do, but 
exploring. It's like you only get to do it sometimes. We went out in New York City last night. We went out across the street from the the venue that we played. So it's like I'm not gallivanting around the nation and you seeing could. every. Yeah, <laughs> I could if I wanted to, but. Like I said, I met you out front at our merch booth today because I didn't want to go out in the heat. Yeah. So it's like, at this point, I'm almost four. I'm four okay, weeks if, into two. Okay. Well, it's like it's like. Let me ask this question again. When it's in like October or maybe yeah. even January. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, that, January I'll be inside because it'll be too cold, and I'm yeah. afraid of getting sick. So it's like. And the ice storms we get here. I mean. We don't have to get into that, but it's crazy <laughs> here in Dallas uh, if you ever come in January. So, I mean, it's. You're a trooper for coming here in August, so I'll, I'll just I'll just say that much. But um, okay, touring, right? A, a, a little pre-tour prep. What do you what do you take with you that's like essential on tour? You don't have to name everything, but what's something that's like maybe special to you? Do you take something different every tour, or there's something consistent that you have to bring with you? I uh, I mean, the only thing that I actually make sure to bring with me is stuff to keep my voice. Like I bring a ton yeah. of cough drops, and like I just got done eat crunching up a cough drop probably in the microphone. Uh, I just like suck on cough yeah. drops all day, but really I try to keep it as minimal as minimal as possible. Like backpack, clothing, makeup. I have four bags, the four Cheney bags that I make sure I have every day. And that's, yeah. you know, you okay. kind of, you have to live in such a small space and I have yeah. to be courteous of the seven other people that I travel or six other people that I travel with. So, so you're not the person that like hogs up all the space with all the bags, right? <laughs> oh, I mean, or I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say you. that. I'm the person with the most bags. But yeah, okay. yeah me and Shannon, you met her. She does yeah. our merch. So. Um, so whether it's like culture, fans, and of course food, really, like we just talked about. I mean, so many, th so many things that really make touring amazing, excuse me. But considering how much touring is going on, right? Like somehow we, I got to mention, somehow we fast forwarded 2020 to 2024. It's been four years somehow. How did that happen? Um, what is it about live music, Chini, that really brings out the best in, in you personally? Because mm -hmm. I mentioned this before. Yes, I have seen footage of you guys perform, but I have personally have never seen you guys perform in person. This oh, will be my first time. You're in for a treat. So I'll, I'll also be uh, your photographer, too, up in the front. So you'll awesome. see me going crazy. But uh, I feel like anything you've done in your life, and, and, I, and I've heard your music for so many years, this is where you are in your element more than anything you do. Would you one agree or percent. disagree? I yeah. one million percent agree. I, uh, what it is about live music, I don't know. It's something that I feel like is like innate to my being. I don't remember a time in my life where I wasn't singing. Like people will ask you, when did you get into music? When did you know that you wanted to be a musician? And for me, it's yeah. like I don't remember that ever being a. I just always have wanted to do that, and it's always been a part of me. So. It's everything. And live music is just such a, a fantastic experience that, I, I don't know, I can't live without it. It's, it's a part of me. It's always such a unique response. I've done maybe 500 interviews to this day, and it's always such a unique response just hearing my guests talk about how live music is, it's almost therapeutic to a point where you oh, yeah. have to be up on stage. Yeah. For me, it's like I have to be at a concert, you know, as, as a journalist or, or whatever it is that I do, I have to be talking to an artist because for me, you know, for example, it, it, I owe it to myself because your music, including it, a lot of people here, saved yeah. my life, including a lot of others. Yeah. Speaking of which, this current tour with Azalea Dying and Chelsea Grin, uh, I want to dive into this a little bit because this is an important tour for a lot of, I feel like, modern deathcore, maybe even metalcore fans, because yeah. you've got some veterans mm -hmm. and up and coming acts like, like that are uh, from a whole movement of music. Janie, I ask a lot of questions about chemistry between members of the same band, because I always find those stories interesting. Yeah. In this case, I want to talk about the chemistry between the different bands oh, yeah. on this tour. Yeah. Do you think it takes chemistry to make tours like this work? Absolutely. Or, you know, or what is it that you take with you on the road to get that chemistry going from one, two, three. It's three well, bands, it's not four or five, but it's right, three. Which I like so. a three band package. <laughs> okay. I'm getting used to this. Uh, of course it takes chemistry. It's everyone working together in synchronicity to make a tour go well. And we've been saying this the whole tour, like As I Lay Dying is truly like the nice, the, the most kind, courteous headlining band that we have ever been out with. Yeah. It's incredible how nice, how cool they are. And uh, it, it does take that to ma make a tour feel like 
it's working really well. And sometimes yeah. you get that and sometimes you don't. It's not always the same thing, but I think a three band package does make it a little easier to to get that going, you yeah. know? But it really takes a good headliner. The headlining band will set the, the what's the word, like the like, tone okay. for the, the tour. For instance, here's something incredible that they did for us. Last night, we, the bathroom for our backstage was like having construction done on it or something, and okay. we could only use the general population bathroom. So As I Lay Dying bought us a hotel room down the street so that we would have a place to go and like hang out by ourselves. And just those little things. Dude. It's fucking, dude, it's so, like, you remember that forever. And that's what inspires, those things inspire me to when Entheos is a headlining band in that situation. That's the type of headliner that I want to be. You know, it, those things, when you witness that happen and you feel the kindness and generosity from other bands, it gets handed down. So much, uh, speaking so much of, trying to make a guess. Tim, I was just talking about how great you are, and you walked in, you're like, I hear him. Uh, <laughs> no, you're good. Tim, we've met a couple of times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aaron is a good friend of mine. So. Oh, good round. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I didn't interrupt. I just was wondering if the audio is going to You're good. She got, she's got a lap here, so it's fine. All right. It's funny, because I was going to ask you. you. I'll let you say nice things about me. <laughs> So Tim oh, yeah. is, uh, I want to ask you about Tim from Azalee Dying, so. <laughs> uh, it's funny because he was just coming by. I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that you, that, that amazing response on how the band has treated you, which is so funny because the lead singer just came by. Yeah, dude, he's. Or is it more impressive that you talked through that with that, with that entire <laughs> double bass? I'm like, she's, she's gonna. Oh yeah, no, I, she's, she's gonna stop dude. here, she's gonna stop here, she's gonna stop here. Nope, she, she did I listen to this all day, I am so used. The other day I was getting a massage. Yeah. And the masseuse was like freaking out about the noise, and I was like, "Dude, I don't even notice it at this point. Yeah. I just hear Dude, it all day long." A lavalier's uh, the, the goat, right? Real quick, <laughs> yeah. you guys have played a couple of headlining dates on this tour already. Yes. We just talked about headlining. What's what's more challenging, headlining or opening? You know, they both come with their challenges mm. because when you're the headlining band, you're freaked out. You're like, uh, "Is this show going to do well?" Uh, and everything relies on you. So being the opener, you can kind of count on someone else to, you know, it's, it, yeah. they're the, they're drawing, you know what I mean? But uh, what I will say about these headlining shows is that because of them, we were like, we are booking a headliner now. Like it's time to, for us to start headlining because they went really well. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know, I'm like saying thank you behind, yeah. the, behind the screen right now. It's really um, surreal, really surreal. Uh, something that's also surreal. I'm going to give a shout out to Naveen really quick because uh, for people who don't know, you two are life partners. And I wonder, having said that, if there's that friendly competitiveness between you both or, or is that level of convenience because you two know each other so well, whether it's in the studio or on stage. Yeah, there's, so. no, there's no competition between Naveen and I. <laughs> okay. You know, the thing about the two of us is that where I lack he has he is strong in those areas and where he lacks I'm I have strengths in those areas yeah. so we work together very well as a team and I think that's a part of why our relationship has worked for 14 years and that's a part of why our band has worked for 10 years and uh, I mean Naveen is like my soulmate yeah and uh, like even thinking about it kind of makes me want to cry because I just feel so lucky that I found my perfect match in this world in music and in love. And it's, I realize how lucky I am to have that. And I'm just so grateful to have him in my life. And I feel like we, we work together really well. And dude, we're together nonstop, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We do not get away from each other. So we're always kind of impressed with ourselves about how well we still get along, you know? It's like, it's kind of amazing, and I think that's a testament to how much we love and respect each other. And I don't think I could do it with anyone except for Naveen. Chaney, I think you're gonna make me cry, like when you guys are on stage, when I'm <laughs> seeing yeah, you guys play I mean, performing person. <laughs> he's the love of my life, and I knew it's crazy. Like the minute that I met him, we knew immediately. Like it was just like that, and it's never gone away. It's here, only gotten stronger. Here you guys are making some insane death metal music that's Thank just, you. it's like, it, I always, I like, it's an interesting question because it's like, you have to meet the person at a certain level, like, okay, yeah. he's going insane with his music compositions. I gotta 
You yeah. know? That's yeah. why I wanted to well, ask Now I'm trying to get him to calm the fuck down. <laughs> now I'm trying to go I don't wrong. think that's going to happen. You guys are way too far <laughs> out of the game. Oh, but no. It's calming down. Believe me. I still am the wife in this situation. <laughs> I'm like, we're calming this shit down, babe. <laughs> uh, whether it's, you know, death metal and in the groove, there's grunge, there's electronica, there's uh, uh, jazz, may I, dare I say I that? I would say, like, yeah. There, there definitely used to be more jazz, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's still some progressive elements so when they're jazzy. I was just jazzy. listening to one of your songs that had a saxophone coming. I was like, there it is. There it is. Because one of my favorite bands is Rivers of Nile. Oh, and, I love Rivers, And, yeah. and uh, uh, it just took me back to that. Because I feel like Entheos is such a breath of fresh air in the world of heavy metal for me. Because I think of bands like, you know, The Faceless and, and, and Art Spire. I'll even throw in John Fred Cowboy. Yeah. Uh, Nation Jealous was on my show, too, a couple months ago. Shout out to him. You just named uh, a bunch of bands that Naveen has played for, except for Art Spire. Holy shit. The Faceless. That's, that's and he was just on the new JFAC. Okay, I yeah. wish we he was here at this yeah, point. Yeah, I know. But, but all uh, this entire time, I feel like Antheos has really formed that I, an identity of, of their own. Mm -hmm. um, I know we talked about almost 10 years into this, but um, after three LPs, I believe Antheos have uh, finally arrived with their sound. I agree. Um, I was going to ask, would you agree to, or disagree I to that? I 100% agree. I feel like, uh, <laughs> you know, Naveen and I are definitely honing in more and more, like, finding... Where are my strengths? Because I, like, all of the grunge influences coming from me, the grungy, doomy yeah. stuff. So we're now writing, like, according to where our strengths are. And I think you will see even more of that incorporated over time, really. Um, time will take us all, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that has pretty much been on my rotation since it dropped. Again, I, I mentioned this before, but an end to everything. I'm going to quote you here, because I, I snatched this from the release here. Musically, our goal on this EP was to write five songs that could both stand on their own as singles and be cohesive as a as a collection. Yeah. And this drops, I think, October 25th. You're something. right. Yeah. Yep. Um, my birthday month is perfect. Hell yeah. Um, can this EP, I don't know what you can and cannot say, can this EP serve as a sneak peek onto what's to come on future oh, yeah. Antheos, or are we just barely scratching the surface here? I feel like that's <laughs> a little bit of both. We're kind of barely scratching the surface. We are, as soon as this tour is over, like, we're going straight back into the studio to write a full length. And we've been, Mark Lewis is our producer and engineer, and he serves as like a third yeah. member of Shout our band. Shout out to him, too, because yeah. he really captured your sound. I've heard the yeah. EP. It's yeah. fucking awesome. Well, Mark is one of our best friends in the entire world. He lives two blocks away from us, so we hang out all the time. I love it. his girlfriend. We're cl I'm really close to her. It's like yeah. we're a family thing. And Mark is the C is the hidden third member of, en of Entheos. Like, we talk all the time about what we're going to do next, and I think we'll move even further into the an end to everything, I am the void uh, area. That's where we want to take the band. So. And it, it's so great about producers, right? I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've had guests come on my show and tell me, hey, this producer is like our sixth member. Yeah. He's like our fourth member. Yeah. Like, it, shout out to those guys because I feel like I know. these producers really don't get enough credit. I, I think of so many, like, you know, Will Putney. Yeah. You know, that guy. I mean, yeah. he's like a, I don't Sometimes I don't even think he's human. Like, I legitimately don't think he's from this planet. Yeah, like, if dude. If there's one person, it's him. Yeah. But I just want to give a shot, you know, Mark Lewis. Like, he did such an ama amazing job. Oh, man. So, I, Mark is... Now it's like, I can't wait for the, now the next album. Oh, me either. The That's how I am. I'm like, can yet, we so. get that? I'm <laughs> over and end to everything. It was, it's been done for yeah. a year. I'm ready to move on, you know? <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but, but Janie, I'm going to round this out to you know, this last part. You know, I know you guys have made a name for yourselves and over the years. I know from when all, the, from all this started, from where you are now, um, I don't know if you get a chance to talk about this a lot, but you have one of the more, to me, and I, can, I think I can speak for everybody in here, in this venue in a couple hours, you have one of the most distincting voices in, in heavy metal. You really do. Thank you. Okay, give yourself credit. Holy Thank shit. you. From whether the growls or the cleans, like, <laughs> I have to go back through the songs, like how did she like, like from this to this? Your your influence is what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. Who are they, and what do they mean to you? Whether they are professional or personal, and we're gonna end the interview there. So you just oh god, take it, so. okay. My influences are all over the board. It's hard for me to name any specific people, but it's like most of what I listen to is like classic rock or grunge or doom, yeah. singy stuff. You know, Stevie Nicks would be the quintessential. Joni Mitchell. Uh, wow. Chelsea okay. Wolf, Marissa Nadler, Emma Ruth Rundle, Greg Puchato, Dillinger Escape Plan. Like, that's a band I aim to be like. They do chaotic very well. They do hit songs very well. Uh, 
Karen O. I mean, Johnny Davy is probably my biggest screaming influence. Randy Blythe, uh, Corpse Grinder. Fuck, dude, I could. I'm obsessed with music. That's the thing about me is that like, I am a musician, but I'm I'm a fan of music first and foremost. Like, I listen to everything, and I feel like I take like a little piece of everything with me along the way. That's just how it goes. So. Anthony Green, you know, it's like now oh, it's all dude. coming to mind. You're, like, uh, like, you're really like reaching, <laughs> reaching yeah, for that bag now. Yeah, dude, I love, I just, I fucking love music and every, I'm obsessed with something new like every two or three months. Right now, all I listen to is Kim Petras, so it's like, you know. Did you say Kim Petras? Kim, oh Kim my, Petras, yeah. Oh my gosh, so I covered Kim Petras when she went through in November. Oh yeah. Oh my God, what? Dude, what Slut Pop Miami I mean, is album of the year, as far talking, as I'm I mean, concerned. We're here for a death metal show, right? Yeah. And we're here talking about geeking out over yeah. Kim Petras, but she's, well, you'll, you'll she's hear. an amazing... Oh, shit. We, we, in our changeover music, before we go on, Kim Petras is on no, there. No, are you, you, are you serious? Out. Of course, dude, of dude. course, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, shoot, I'm, 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 I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh, but Chaney Crab, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, this has been really a long time coming because... This is one of my bucket list bands I wanted to check off. That's but, an but honor. That's very surreal for me. Thank you. But, um, but like, like Tim, I've, I've known him for a while. Yeah. The fact that you were here, it kind of like come around full circle. But any last words, anything else you'd like to mention or promote as far as this tour, the new EP, new music, whatever you want to say to the fans. Just it's... listen to it, dude. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have and to say. Banana... And eat banana And eat banana pudding. pudding. I keep thinking that's like croissants or something i can't really see from this angle but there's a whole bunch anything. of food sitting behind cheney right now there's but, a whole bunch of food yeah. that there's, i can't eat until after we play because yeah. i will throw it up on stage well there's a, there's a bunch of watermelon spots yeah, except <laughs> <for there>. but <laughs> <laughs> all right Jenny, thank you so much we'll up, right. keep it keep in touch oh that's good <laughs> I, i'm gonna bring you back for our podcast when you guys actually maybe when new music is further down the road let's do it I want to do it with you and Naveen, if that works. Absolutely. Because I would love to uh, dig, his, dig into his mind on, uh, yeah. on anything that goes we'll behind do it. what he does. But All right. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.